Okay. So our next speaker is Xiaoxiong Liu yeah. from the University of Zurich, and he will um, talk about the symmetrization of Berry curvature and magnetic moment. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm very happy to give a talk today. Uh, in this talk, I will talk about how to symmetrize the Berry curvature and the magnetic moment uh, with uh, one year interpolation. Uh, at first, I will talk about why I need the symmetry. The recently, I'm doing, I'm trying to calculate the uh, conductivity uh, as a response function of different order of electric field and magnetic field. And all the conductivity is kind of solved by a Barry Boltzmann equation. And, and each of the uh, conductivity should be a function of energy and very curvature and magnetic moment. Uh, for example, looks like this uh, integral of uh, something over all the brain zone. And here is uh, a nonlinear anonymous Hall effect uh, conductivity. So to make the conductivity converge, we need a very dense K grade and we need a lot of time to calculate. A easy way to reduce the calculation time is only to calculate the symmetry reduced K grade. But usually, the if we use one year interpolation, the one year functions slightly break the symmetry a little bit, uh, like this one. Here is a plot uh, uh, of uh, very curvature Z component of one band from uh, trigonal tellurium. The tellurium have C3 rotation. Uh, we can see is roughly have the C3 rotation, but uh, for the details, not. It's clearly here. It break a little bit, C3 rotation, and the details around here as well. If we only calculate the reduced K grade, it's like this. Now we do have some symmetry, but the first problem, does the two figure equivalent which is other? I think it's no, because you only choose part of the K point from the uh, non-symmetric data site, and you, you will lose some information. And it showed, uh, yeah, it showed in the result here. Here is the uh, Barry curvature dipole result based on different energy. And some energy use reduced K grade converts to a different result with uh, the full K grade. And the second problem, wow, why it look like this? Sorry. The second problem is we can clearly see with only a part of the K point, the data is not smooth. The non-smooth data will give us a lot of noise when we evaluate the integral. That means we need more k points to converge. It also showed it in the, in the result here. With full k grade, it have a very good convergency here, but with part of the k grade, it's not. And uh, in this part, because there is a well point, we <laughs> should have uh, the bad convergence is understandable. Uh, if we focus on uh, the normal part here without well point and the band intersection, uh, the <coughs> convergence is bad with reduced k grade. So that's why I am thinking about if I have a symmetric data site, can we improve it? The most cheaper way for me to have some symmetry is directly symmetrize the uh, output from one year 90 and have some symmetry. Okay, the basic idea to symmet uh, symmetrize the Hamiltonian is from uh, Chang Ming, who is the postdoc in University of Freiburg. Uh, the basic idea is following. Let's think about a two dimensional grid uh, the yellow dot means the original point, and uh, each uh, orange dot means the position of autumn. That means at each unit cell, we have only one autumn located at the zero point. Uh, let's assume if each autumn only have one S orbital, how to symmetrize this whole thing? 
the idea is find all the, oh, from here, we only consider the C3 rotation. Only uh, find all the symmetry equivalent hopping and sum together, calculate the average, we can get a symmetric hopping map. It's only for the S orbital, but for the P orbital or D orbital, we need to rotate the orbital as well. Uh, like here, if we want to uh, rotate the orbital from beta prime to beta, we can build a, a coordinate system at a local coordinate system at beta and another local coordinate system at beta prime, which after C3 rotation, we can find a projector to the E prime system to E system. The projector, it should be the uh, rotation matrix of the orbitals. I mean, the one year functions. Okay, if our Hamiltonian is respect to the symmetry, we can have this relation of the Hopkins. If it break the uh, symmetry a little bit, we can use this function to symmetrize the Hopkins. And this symmetrization method is implemented in one year tools uh, only for the Hamiltonian. But for me, only Hamiltonian is not uh, enough. I uh, need uh, the, to symmetrize uh, very curvature and magnetic moment. And actually, if we consider a well point at a high symmetry point, the very curvature is more uh, sensitive with the symmetry than I, uh, energy eigenvalue. If we break the symmetry a little bit, the well point will have to move a little bit away and around the high symmetry point. If we consider the high symmetry point, the energy eigenvalue will give us a little gap. But the Bevy curvature is changed very fast around the band intersection. That's the number, if we only consider the, uh, the high symmetry point, the value of the Bevy curvature will be definitely different with the uh, with it on the uh, right on the well point. Uh, that's one point. And, and another point is energy eigenvalue is just a number, but the Bevy curvature is a vector. They can break the symmetry in three dimensional space. That's why I see it's more sensitive. Okay, to try to symmetrize it, we need to and know how to interpolate uh, uh, Barry curvature. To interpolate Barry curvature, we need to first interpolate the Barry connection A. Uh, with Vanier function, they have two terms. One is A terms and one is D term. The A term we can use a uh, position element to calculate and D terms is uh, use uh, Hamiltonian is enough. Uh, Hamiltonian, we already know how to symmetrize it and how to symmetrize the position element. Actually, it's the same way. Uh, the only difference we need a additional S. Uh, S is the rotation matrix because it's a vector. We need to rotate in a vector again. But there is some special invent when R equals to zero because uh, when R equals to zero, the diagonal element is of the A matrix is uh, one year centers. If we rotated one year centers by S, the one year centers sometimes from the home unit cell change to another unit cell. We need additional term to push the one year centers back to the home unit cell. And for the magnetic moment the spin part, it's very simple. We can use the same formula. And for magnet, uh, for the orbital part, first we need to find the interplate function as well, like this. Uh, the omega we already know, and the, the new term is the G term. The G term is the details is a lot of uh, another matrix, which is new for us is the B and the C matrix. We need to know how to symmetrize these two matrix. For the B matrix, uh, we can use the totally the same way with the A matrix to symmetrize it. For the C matrix, uh, which is the tensor matrix, so we need uh, two rotation 
matrix to rotate the vector, uh, each vector polyon. So up to here, we can finish the symmetrized uh, energy eigenvalue and very curvature and magnetic moment all I need. Um, let's uh, move to the spin optical coupling. At before, I only uh, talk about how to rotate the axis of the orbital. If we have a spin optical coupling, the simple idea is to add the uh, spin rotation matrix to the orbital rotation matrix P to make it working for uh, a spin optical coupling system. And for magnetic system, we need an uh, additional uh, input, which is the magnetic moment of each atom. We can use that to, to improve the group from space group into magnetic group to find the uh, which symmetry is respect to our system. Okay. From the result part, we made a semi, same result as before, after symmetrization. Here we have a totally perfect symmetry now. From the result side, if we only use a reduced uh, uh, K grade after symmetrization, it can converge to very close to the uh, full K grade calculation before symmetrization. And I keep a very good convergency, this part and this part, except the venue point part. Okay, that's uh, all I want to talk today. Thank you very much. Okay, <clears throat> so there is time for a few questions. If you are joining on Zoom, please raise your hand virtually with a button or uh, write your message in the chat and we will read your question. Otherwise, if you're in presence here, just raise your hand and I'll give you the microphone. Uh, so let's say you have like a PX orbital. Mm -hmm. You do a threefold rotation, mm -hmm. then it becomes a combination of PX and PY. Yeah. And then you, can you still do this averaging or no? Um, actually, is to change by group of orbitals, just like the, based on the uh, complex axis, just like XYZ. I mean, PX, PY, PZ will rotate together. Oh, so you, it still works? It you, still works. Still, okay. And then just like... Um, like this uh, minimis, uh, maximum optimization. Oh. Is, there, is, is there a simple answer to why does it break the symmetry or? Mm, I'm not sure. I don't know, okay. Maybe somebody can comment on that. I'm kind of confused. Okay, any other questions? I see none. If not, we can thank again our speaker. And move to the next talk that is actually connected to yours, right? It's like a sort of a part one and part two, right? The like talk yeah. of me. Okay. So it will be a sort of a continuation of this work. The part one is my talk and the next talk is part two. Ah, okay. So, you were in, okay. so you, you're giving part one, yeah. the prequel. Yeah. <laughs> So you can use this one, I think it's louder. Share the screen. <laughs> <laughs> 